Once you've repeated the movement for five or 10 minutes and you know you can do it mechanically correct, after that we have to start adding some level of resistance, it has to be alive. That's the funnest part of training. But if you just do the technique for five or 10 minutes and then it's like, okay, let's roll, then you just go back to what you normally do when you roll, which is how a lot of people train. The most important part is the part that got skipped is the drilling part in the I-method, the isolation stage. That should be the majority of the time spent during a class. So you work the technique for five or 10 minutes, you can do it mechanically correct, and now for the next 40 minutes, we're gonna do rounds. One side, try and punch, one side, defend, and then roll you know, for five or 10 minutes after that. But that's how you really start to develop the skill and, and, and spend time here. So adaptive resistance, if Ray's clobbering Travis, he's gotta dial it back down so that Travis is learning something from it. If Travis is successful all the time, he's gonna dial it up. Okay, and we'll just watch and see what happens. And then, you know, 90% of the time, most all of us, myself included, tend to make similar mistakes from positions like this, which we can learn from. Okay, go ahead. So we start, from start there, and then Ray's going to stay mounted and try and touch your head with the gloves. Yeah, you can climb if he gives it to you. Okay. And then uh, you're going to try and escape, but upa only. Upa only. I don't want to see any elbow knee escapes. Very nice. Right back to it. I don't want to spend 10 minutes of video showing you that, but just give you an idea of how you should drill. So find a training partner you like working with and set the timer for long rounds. That, that round should be at least five minutes. There's no point for like two or three minutes. It takes sometimes three or four minutes to figure out what the other person's doing. So you got to let your body have time to adapt. I like five or 10 minute rounds per side. So slow it down if you have to, so you can do a longer round and that way you can start to problem solve during the round. And the thing you notice there, the monkey paw works good. Um, it's hard to climb, it's harder to climb than it looks on film when they're connected to your hips. And so the, the real secret to making that technique work is the fact that you gotta keep hip connection with them the whole time. So Travis is keeping his hips up the whole time, staying connected to Ray, that means he can affect Ray's base you know, instantly, within a, a millisecond, and that's what makes this, this work. If you get lazy and you drop your hips back flat to the mat, all, it's not going to work out well. So you got to maintain that connection and you got to spend time doing it. Welcome to my Mount Escape video. I'll tell you a little bit about this series, how it came into play. Every year, those people who are students of SBG or, or uh, people who take my classes know, I teach one topic per year at all my seminars. And so I'll, I'll just go back and dive into a particular topic to review what I think are the most fundamental things from that position or place or game, uh, rearrange it and come up with a curriculum that I'm really happy with that revolves around fundamentals, not what's most basic, but what's most important. And then I teach it over and over and over again, different groups all over the world. And I make all kinds of changes every time to try and make it better. And by the time December comes around, I've taught that same class probably 24 times all over the world and I'm pretty comfortable with the information, but also I'm comfortable with what people struggle with, what people find easier, the kinds of questions I got asked most often. And that's when I come in in December and lay it on tape here or in video uh, for you guys, for SBGU and for students who follow what we do. The moment he goes to lift his hips, he affects my base so he can defend himself. So that's the upper body. But notice lower body, I still have my hooks. So I have better control. My big toes are touching. And when you're mounted, your feet should always be pointed inside like that, okay? Like I'm gonna cross my feet over. So ideally, ideally, he would have the inside here too. So he gets his legs flat like that. Now, if his knees pointed up a little bit, no, you can have it flat, but up, yeah. There's a little bit of space here. You're gonna see this more when I teach the elbow knee escape. There's a little bit more space where I can get my foot. And by definition, people who are good at holding mount are good at doing this kind of stuff. That's why they're, they can hold mount. They're good at, at um, building wedges underneath your body, okay? So if he points his knee out, flat as you can get it, but he turns it a little bit. So his kneecap's pointed that way. Not so much that it lifts, but just there. Hard, maybe hard to see with the gi pants, but that makes it harder for me to get my foot underneath. Now let's say I wrap up an arm. 
Yeah, so I have a good overhook. He's open on this side. His leg's trapped for me, really. But every time I go to make the roll, yeah, he's hipping in on me, right? So I go to do the upa, he's hipping in on me. So here's the first one. As simple as this is, I can't tell you how many times I've used it. Uh, and it's the first obvious thing to do, is I go for that upa and I feel, how is he gonna counter? Oh, he's got a good counter. Okay, so now the next time I just go here. Okay, so all I'm doing is at my feet. The first time I go to upa, ah, okay. Okay, so I just anticipate and step out. Now he might be a little, little more clever than that, in which case he'll shadow me. Here in Gracie, first of this is shadow hooks, which is an apt name. Okay, so as I move my leg, he's tracking me. And really, when you do this well, I'll feel uh, the back of Ray's calf against the back of my thigh. And it's hard for me to get away because I'm in neutral here. So here, I'll go to do the upa again, hold my hips up to re-pummel my foot, and then continue. So because he's low, I don't need, if, if you have the angle right, you don't need that huge elevation. We'll talk about mount. Mount's kind of a defining position of jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and if you look at all the different grappling arts, every warrior culture in the world has grappling arts. Mm -hmm. It's essential for when you knock the guy over with a sword, you gotta have some grappling. Mm -hmm. And um, most have cross side stop, headlocks, things like that. Mount is very specific to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Along mm -hmm. with the guard, which is an upside down mount, it's kind of a defining position. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, in uh, students' training, they're usually working always jujitsu versus jujitsu, or in the case of MMA, an MMA fighter against another trained MMA fighter. But in the beginning, if you were to take mount in a self-defense situation or in a fight, or even with somebody who, who might be technical but starts to get frustrated, they're going to use a lot of strength and they're going to use a lot, uh, you know, power to knock you off. They're just going to mm. grab you and throw you off. That would be what the av average human being would do. Mm. And so what I want to make sure you can do, how much do you weigh, Zach? 240. Okay, so you got somebody who's about 280. <laughs> and how much do you weigh, Rokas? I think it's uh, 180 based on 180, okay. So let's just say he has almost 100 pounds on you for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to ask Zach to respond in the beginning, not with uh, technical jujitsu, but more just like what a big guy would do if you're sitting mm -hmm. on him and it's mm -hmm. a fight. And we'll see how you do. Right. Okay, so go ahead and lay down, Zach. You get mount off a takedown somehow. And I'm going to have Zach respond the way a big, aggressive, angry person would respond if you're sitting on him that, you know, maybe is not uh, technically trained. And I just want you to try and stay on top. Okay, okay. go ahead. And for here, Zach, I want you to focus on pushing uh, on his body and rib cage and trying to knock him off you. Ready? Go. Okay, try again. Give you a couple shots at it. Ready? Yep. Good, and one more time. Try and stay on top, Rokas. Good, okay, so let's fix that. Okay, so first thing uh, I like to talk about whenever I'm teaching is base and posture, okay? Um, base and posture is where everything begins. And to begin with, I'm gonna teach you, we're gonna work primarily today from a low mount. Okay, so there's three real, three basic mounts. First one is a low mount, meaning I'm kind of laying my weight on Zach and you'll see my hips are connected. Mm. Second one I call a middle mount, and that's gonna be here where my knees are pinched together, my feet aren't crossed. Mm -hmm. And a third one, which is a more aggressive one when you start to attack and climb, is what we call high mount when we're up here, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start you at a low mount. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and touch my feet together, if you look back here, uh, sometimes call it prayer feet. So um, the soles of my feet are touching, not, uh, I don't want them out like this. So they're always here underneath them. And then my upper body, my hands go wide at 45, okay? If you go here, you're vulnerable side to side. If you go here, when he bridges, you'll hit your head. So it's like this. My elbow is always slightly bent because if he grabs it aggressively and your arm's locked out, it can hurt, okay? Now when he grabs and tries to reel in my arm, I push into the mat. Let's so try an overhook push into the mat. You have a lot of strength there when, when you do it that way, okay? 
So that's the first piece. Then I want to relax my upper body. Okay, so if he goes to push me up straight up, he's pushing dead weight and it's hard for him. Okay, go back down. I still have to respond, but we want to make sure we're relaxed. So go to push me up. Good. Go back. Then the first motion we're going to do is a swimming motion. So I'm going to uh, kill the frames. So as he pushes me up, I'm going to move one hand at a time and swim back to the mat. Pushes me up. Don't do this because sometimes your hands can get trapped. Yep. And then you don't have a hand to post. But one at a time, you'll see I turn my shoulders, swim inside, push. That's different from he pushes and I lift my weight off him. As soon as you do that, he'll retract his arms and push somewhere else. But if he's holding me up, push, he doesn't really want to move his arms back because he has a feeling if he moves his arms, move your arms, I'll fall back on. Yeah. Okay, so he pushes me up and I swim. What happened is my weight, my hips, now on the back of his ankle and his calf. Very difficult for him to get the arm out. But the other nice thing is I've accented the angle. Right? Not only have I gotten my ear out of the way, but I've turned my body a little bit that opens up this angle even more. And the last step, 12 o'clock, right? And watch how little I need to move to get him over when you have the right angle. Now, He's mounted, good receiving posture, puts a hand in the collar. I grip, I do one at a time, just get my elbows down and I get here. All that's done, I shorten the side, I look to 12 o'clock. If I have the good connection and good angle, there's nothing Ray can do with his upper body that's gonna allow him to stay on top. I will, you will always roll them, okay? If he can use this hand and post and stop, your angle is wrong. No matter what he does with this arm, if you have the correct angle, it won't work. Watch, I'm gonna go slow, and he can try and stop me with his head, with his hand, however he wants, okay? It's just not gonna work. We're gonna work a reverse shrimp, which is still technically a turnover. I'm kind of cheating a little bit because this is not really an upa, but it does take me from bottom to top, okay? So I go to work the upa, he transitions to side mount. Yeah, so I wind up like this. So here I want to make sure I, I get my elbows close to my body. I'm doing an external rotation because I'm trying to bring my arms in. I don't want to give him anything to attack right away. Then I'm going to extend. So I want to extend my arm, engage my arm. So I'm pushing on the inside of his knee and getting a good frame. So there's good connection. There's no slack. At the same time I do that, bring your knee back. At the same time I do that, I slide this knee up. So his foot's trapped, and now I can go here to turn him over. And a reverse shrimp is just that. I, begin, I shrimp by facing the ceiling, and the leg that lets you do reverse shrimps is your bottom leg here. So watch my left foot. I plant my left foot on the mat, and my left foot goes to face the ceiling. And as my hips turn, that's the turnover. And obviously right away as I get on top, I'm concerned about triangles and arm lock, so I'm pummeling and, and fixing my hands. But there's a lot of power there, more than people think. Come back here, Travis. So I'll take side mount on Travis. So you're gonna extend that, and good, engage it. Same time this one comes up. Yeah, see now my ankle is trapped. My base is compromised. Remember what I said, one knee down, you're super vulnerable on this side. So now he can just use that foot, swim this up, and there we go. Yes, good, he came underneath the triangle. So thinking about what I was gonna do for my yearly release, I came up with mount escapes. I think mount escapes are great because I think mount is a, you know, a, a, a position that is really in some ways kind of unique to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's one of those positions you don't see in you know, Greco or folk style, a lot of the other Sambo, a lot of the other wrestling arts. It's important, it's a fundamental position for fighting and incorporated in, in the escapes from mount are all the essential principles that you will then see all over in jiu-jitsu. So uh, I thought I'd start with this. Plus the first video series I did in this kind of new series where I teach one topic was um, low mount. So I thought fitting, if I'm gonna do something, I'll show escapes. Um, what you're gonna see here is a curriculum 
And generally what I do is I start with what I feel is the most important, and then I work my way down to, by the time we get towards the end, we're focused more on possibilities. So we begin with like the base posture connections, and then we go into pressures, and then here's a few possibilities at the end of the, the, of the video. People who I think have a good understanding of jujitsu are gonna pay close attention to what I teach in the beginning, the first couple lessons. People who have a lower understanding of jujitsu are gonna fast forward through the first couple of lessons and go right to the end to try and find new techniques. So just keep that in mind as far as how you, how you view the tapes. I do have it in an order for a reason. So I hope you enjoy it. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. And thank you for getting serious. This is a mount I like to work a lot. So let's say Ray goes to roll me this way. And I feel him going. That's my counter. Okay, he's felt it. So the obvious one, the first one is before he does it next time, he just pummels his foot in. Right, there you go. If I don't have good connection to him, I may not even know he did that. Right, he moves his foot inside. And now for sure he can get me. Good. But now he goes to do that. I'm tracking him. I'm shadowing his leg. Good shadow hook, right? So what he needs to do now is begin the sprawl, uh, the upa process. As I sprawl, he keeps the tension on my leg and then repummels his heel. That's it. And then you take him over. Simple, I know, but very effective. I'll talk about what to do to trap the arm more in a minute because it can be more difficult catching the arms from low mount because they can put their hands out a lot wider. He put his hands in the armpit and try and throw me off or he pushes on my upper body and he tries to throw me to the side. And here I want to connect to him. So as he tries to throw me towards you, I connect my hand to his neck and I pose. Now once I've done this, right, he can't really push me, push me off. He's pushing into himself. It's very important to get an attachment to the neck. So I'm not starting you here. I'm starting you here. Mm -hmm. And when you feel him go to push, you grab the neck and pose. Mm -hmm. He goes to push, grab the neck and pose. He pushes me straight up. I swim, throws me off to the side. Grab the neck and pose. Okay, try that. If she tries to wrap it, like she tries to use her arm to wrap it, go again real slow. It's, all, it's not gonna work, it's all strength, right? It's hard. So instead, nice and slow, same thing, and then freeze. She brings her elbow up. Now she just brings the elbow straight down, and then she can capture my arm, okay? So this is one of the things when we're pummeling, the way you capture the arm is like that. So that's the first piece, thank you. Here's the second thing that would happen to me. I would bump, bring him forward. They go to wrap up the arm, but he pulled his arm out already, right? So Ray bumps and brings me forward. There's nothing preventing me from just lifting my hands back off the mat. So then the question is what, is it speed? Are you supposed to be faster than they are to make it work? So we have to solve that problem by making them put the weight, their weight into their own hands. Let me reiterate what I talked about in the beginning. I want you to isolate. I want you just to be working the upa. I want you to do long rounds. After you've done that for a week or a couple weeks, then put elbow knee escape in one at a time um, and start to put it together. And so last, very last uh, technique I'll show in the series, I will show you know, the way the elbow knee escape is typically taught. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a good movement. I just think it's designed to work in a very particular place. And so let's show the classical elbow knee escape. So I have uh, Coach Travis on his back, I'll have Ray get on top. I'll just have Ray sit up so you can see. Uh, the first thing is uh, you have to have that good receiving posture. And here you don't just want your triceps to the mat, but you also want your legs flat and your kneecap pointed towards me. The more you can point your kneecap towards me, yeah, the better. So he switched to one, that's fine. You can do it with both, but that's very important. Um, with that frame, just like I showed earlier in the series, you wanna feel like you're pulling your shoulders back into the mat. And what is that? It's an external rotation with his arms. So even though his hand might be like this, what he's really doing with his body is an external rotation like that. So if Ray tries to pull up on the arms, it's very hard. Yeah. Now here is the only place where I'm really gonna want you to make this frame. And that's where he'll bring this hand here. Or really it's the only place that I use this frame. It's just this one spot. Okay, now once you get here, what you're gonna to begin to do is slide this knee up, 
Good. And the more you slide the knee up, the more you're compromising that leg. Now you have to make sure your elbow is inside. Very important. And now do a crunch. So move your body to there. Yes. And as you do the crunch, you don't even have to escape yet. Go back. Do a crunch first. The more you crunch here, then that part becomes easy. You slip the foot, the leg underneath the knee. And this is the main, you're always coming under. You're not trying to go through the leg, right? You're coming under. Now you can use your foot if you want. But to be honest, <clears throat> I don't like showing fishing with your ankle in the beginning because those students, you show them that, that's, they'll just do that now for the next two years. That should be something you only do if you have to do. You want to be able to mechanically pull it off without that motion.